I'm going to talk to you about, about the Cerberus. And in case you don't know what she looks like, uh, that's one turret, that's the other one, and there's the conning tower. And you might say, but what? How can you have a conning tower on, on a warship? I mean, conning towers are on submarines. But, folks, guess what? It's a conning tower. This was state-of-the-art technology. This is a view of her uh, at her port base in Williamstown. And people go and say to me, well, what does a 10-inch Armstrong rifle gun do? If you get a crusher and go <laughs> and crush a VW into a lump of metal and then just go and put it down uh, the inside of one of those 10-inch guns, you could fire it basically from um, here. <clears throat> you do a lot of damage to the bridge and a lot of other things way beyond it. So they had phenomenal firepower. They could throw typically a 600-pound uh, shell uh, several miles, about seven or eight, ten miles. So that, that was awesome firepower in those days. But of course, after time, they sold off her engines you know, and sold off bits and pieces and eventually sold her this magnificent warship prior to the Victorian colonial navy to a yacht club <laughs> and sank her in 1926 as a breakwater. Uh, this used to be what the Cerberus looked like and I went along after a storm uh, in 1993 and I went and measured how thick the metal was and I said <laughs> three and a half millimetres of steel ain't going to hold up 5,000 tonnes of steel for much longer and I predict it'll collapse within you know, roughly five years. Well my report sat on a, an administrator's desk for four and three quarter years and then it was found and they said oh do 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 oh, the ship's about to collapse. And about two weeks after reading the report, boom, it collapsed. I was very gratified. <laughs> uh, but what we did in 1994, that's what the service used to look like. And we went all along the uh, port s side and then on the starboard side. And we did a total of 21 measurements. But they weren't just 21 measurements. We did them at the interface with the sand, uh, at standing height and at floating height. And so, so we did something like 64 measurements on the thickness, the voltage, the pH, because we really wanted to know what was going on. But the main thing was we came back and we found that the ship was a bit sick. And <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what had happened. You know, it, it, had, it had gone and this is, I mean, it did look magnificent originally. And these, this lower hull could be flooded and the ship could be lowered in the waterline. And basically you could have these mobile turrets going along and firing at you if you're a Russian. And, um, and you'd be very hard to hit because there'd be virtually no, no target. It was brilliant technology. And so the only things that remain uh, all the superstructures gone, conning towers still there, and the gun turrets are in place. Anyway, so one of the things was we had to work out what the treatment options were, and they were either in situ preservation, do you jack it up, what do you do with it, do you, do you make it an artificial uh, island, do you shove concrete in its heart, uh, or what do you do with it, or do you just let it collapse? And so Heritage Victoria said, right, we'll lighten the load. And they took the four guns, uh, four gun barrels uh, out, out of the thing. Why? Because you know, they're very heavy. They're a good couple of hundred tons each. So we, we almost lightened the whole structure by you know, nearly a thousand tons. It's not bad, is it? But what do you do with the guns? Where do you store them? It's money. So we dumped them in the sea. And you think, what cretin would do that? Well, that's because I advised them to do it. Um, and before, before we put them in the sea, we went with a drill and 
drilled a little hole in the steel, tapped a thread on it, and put a bolt in so that as soon as the guns were wet, we could tap on anodes and protect the guns. Because not only do you protect the guns from corrosion, you treat them in situ. And all that you need to do at the end of this is when they're ready for the next stage of the exhibition, you just go hoik up your cannon, go tap, 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 take all the concretion off, and your gun is essentially conserved, ready to go on exhibition. And went over the last July with Dick Garcia uh, to look inside the turrets. And because most of you aren't able to jump into a boat and get onto the Cerberus, this is what it looks like on the inside. These upper works, the teak, the original teak decks, still in perfect condition. Uh, all this, all this decay can be fixed. Um, we can get these guns working again. And you can see the thickness of that. That came off with just a judicious use of a dumpy hammer. Um, and so, uh, and that, it can be fixed. And so the conservation options are, well, uh, you can all read, do nothing, uh, and just interpret the site and say, this is where the world's only surviving monitor-style warship was dumped as a breakwater and you're watching heritage decay in action. <laughs> Not recommended. Um, or you could interpret the site and say, out there was the Cerberus. <laughs> Boring. Uh, build a replica. Boring. You know, when you got the original thing, do something with it. And what we said to the people was, you could take the gun turrets off and fix them and have the cannons and you could have it working and have a replica nearby and or they said why can't we take the whole thing and I said it took us 20 years to conserve the Xantho engine I'm not going to be around it well I might be yeah if I get my OBE that is over bloody 80 uh, I, I will get uh, be able to maybe see the Cerberus up and running. But they said, what about the Great Britain option? Because with the SS Great Britain, which was brought back from the Falklands and put in this big dry dock in Bristol, um, they couldn't stop the corrosion uh, in, in the steelwork underneath. But if you pull the relative humidity down to 10 or 11 percent, the corrosion just says, stuff it. Too much effort. I'll just sit and wait. And, and so what they've done, they've put this huge glass top all around the upper works, because it rains in England. Um, and and there's, there, there it is, this pseudo bit of glass with a bit of water floating on it, and it's sealed up against the hull. And down below, you can walk through and see the ship. And even though it's like a time bomb waiting to go off and re-corrode, it's just sitting there saying, ha ha, I'm happy. So there is a future for the Cerberus, but <clears throat> it might cost you a little bit of money. But guess what? Heritage is worth it. And so, because you only got one chance to save it. So start your lobbying and we'll get the money soon. Thank you. <laughs>